Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the house of the Lord. As we gather around God's word today, we do so seeing that our hope is restored because God has given us his word. To begin this morning, we'll sing our first hymn, hymn number 346.
God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven you of all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Since you call on the Father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as gold or silver that you were redeemed from the empty way of life and down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but it was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him we believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the words and works of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Our hearts were burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. Alleluia.
and sing our hymn of the day, that is hymn number 160. So they're going along, they're traveling, 
And as they're on their way, they get into quite a bit of a discussion. It was more than just a simple chat. You've seen what these discussions can look like, those discussions about religion. You've had them with your own family members after a church service as you're, you're driving on home or you're going over to Culver's to get a butter burger. You know what it looks like. Or you're really digging on deep, trying to figure out what is exactly is going on. You've seen them around the kitchen table as one of your own is having a hard time. And they're trying to find comfort from God's word to see where they can go to get into it, to, to see what God has to say. That's the kind of conversation, this kind of heavy digging that these two people were doing as they were walking along their way. While they are doing this, all of a sudden, somebody comes up and joins them. For us, if we're out walking on Breezewood and it's just two people walking and somebody joins you, that's, that's a little odd. But this is a different situation. What had just happened was the Passover. There were a lot of pilgrims who were up in town in Jerusalem for that feast. Everybody had the same faith. Everybody was Jewish. So they talked with each other about what had been going on. And yes, it was not that out of the ordinary for this particular gentleman to go and meet with them. What was out of the ordinary was that this was Jesus who had just risen from the dead a couple of hours earlier. These men, although they were his disciples, didn't know it was Jesus because God prevented them from knowing so. And, well, Jesus, he asked them a simple question. Basically, what are you talking about? With that, they stopped. They stopped dead in their tracks. They stopped talking. They stopped walking. Their faces became downcast. Once more, you know what this is like. When you have the finality of the reality of death just hit you out of nowhere. It's the kind of feeling that you get when you have something really neat or interesting happen to you, and you're ready to go home and talk to that person about what had just gone on now. Then you remember they're not there anymore. Or you look on over to that chair where they so often sat, and they're not there either. That's what was going on with these two people. So they recognized that Jesus was dead. So they looked at him and they, they asked him the question, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that had happened there in these days? It was plain, it was obvious, everybody knew what had gone on down. Last Sunday it started off with a, a ruckus turmoil. Yet this man riding into town, riding upon a donkey, just like Zechariah had said, and this was the king with the palm branches, the sons of David shouts, the hallelujahs, the hosannas. All that was happening. Everybody knew about that. Just everybody knew what happened a few days later when the Jews went and took this same man and brought him before Pontius Pilate that he might be crucified. And he was. Everyone in the town knew this. How is it that this man didn't? Of course he did. There were the things that he did and it happened to him. But he so innocently asked them the question, what things? What things happen? You get a bit of a chuckle out of that one, don't you? Thinking about Jesus asking that question to these two people. What things? Maybe some of the angels up in heaven as they were looking down upon the earth on that day, they, they recognized the, well, irony of the situation too. Maybe they also got a chuckle out of it. But Jesus asked that question. What things? And so the people respond. About Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. We were hoping, meaning they at once hoped, but now no longer. Jesus was dead, it was over, there was no joy, there was no hope, there was no idea for the future as to what was going to go on. How do you not get it, guys? How do you not understand? You, you are disciples of Jesus and yet do not understand the very word of God? Do you not get that it had to be Jesus? Did you not understand all these things? That, you're even pointing out the sign of Jonah, you're pointing out that, that this is the third day. 
You had heard him tell you it. You had heard him say, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. It's the third day. He's going to rise from the dead. But they didn't understand. They didn't get it. Because they were no longer trusting in solid ground. They were not trusting in the word of God. They were trusting in what their eyes were revealing to them. And since they could not see Jesus, Jesus was still in the tomb. They had their biases. They were biased. Everybody who goes to the Word of God is biased. Some of these biases are very good. Taking a look at the Word of God and saying that, yes, it is God's Word, and it's one cohesive book, and the main point of it is Jesus Christ and how we're saved. Those are pretty good biases. But there aren't always good ones. Some people are biased, ourselves included at times, when we go to the scriptures and we are arrogant, thinking that we already know what is the truth and we stand over the top of scripture and when scripture doesn't do or say exactly what we want, we get mad at God. Sometimes we're biased because of, I don't know what it is, it's laziness, it's just that we're not taking out the time or what it is exactly, but that we don't know the word of God. And so we think we know what it says, but we don't. There are biases all around. And these men too, they were biased. They were biased because they were trusting in their eyes, not in the word of God. They were trusting in what they had seen, not what God had so solemnly told them all these thousands of years. It's going to get you into trouble every single time. So what hope do we have? If these people probably, yes, did know the Bible pretty well, and yes, had walked and talked to Jesus, who had been his disciples, if even they didn't get it. Well, if our hope is in our own discernment or in our own knowledge or intellect, no, we don't have any hope. But that's not what our hope is in. Our hope is in a couple of other things that are a little bit more strength-filled and powerful than us. Those things, those people, really, are Jesus our Christ, the great prophet, the one who had been promised, and the Holy Spirit. One who is sent to comfort and to restore and to bind up the broken heart. The Holy Spirit will talk about him in a few weeks' time when Pentecost comes, May, uh, May 28th, not too far away. But Jesus, he's who we're going to talk about today and how he does serve as our prophet and how he does stay with that word and make sure that it's proclaimed and see to it that the truth is still proclaimed to this day too. Look here at what this prophet, our prophet, does, what Jesus does. The oddest part about this all, really, isn't it? It's the fact that Jesus doesn't reveal himself. I mean, that seems the strangest thing of all, because if Jesus would simply just come on out and reveal himself, all these problems would be taken away. They would be able to take a look at him, see that he's been raised from the dead, and understand, okay, I'm no longer in my sin. Jesus is still the one that I thought he was. I no longer have my angst or my anger or my sadness. Joy is now mine. That's what it would have been able to happen if Jesus simply would have appeared to these two who were on the road walking to a maze. But he didn't. And why not? Because he had something better in mind for them and also for the rest of the church. What Jesus had in mind was this. Beginning with Moses, and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. By doing this, he did not allow them to continue to trust in their eyes, but rather pointed them to something solid, namely his word. And there, beginning with Moses, he began to explain how it all really was, in fact, about him. What exactly he was talking about, the exact lessons or accounts that he used, we're not sure, but it's fun to think about nonetheless. Going back to the, the beginning, did he go and explain to these people that he was the one who God the Father had promised who would crush the head of the serpent and whose heel would be struck? Did he go to the Passover? As there he talked about that innocent lamb in the prime of its life without defect was slaughtered for the sake of the people and by whose blood they were saved. How he was a fulfillment of such a thing. Did he go to Leviticus 16 and the great day of atonement where there a bull and a goat were slaughtered and the blood was put, put on the uh, Ark of, of the Covenant and then upon the altar as well, making sure that blood was spilled 
but not the people's blood. It was not them who was supposed to be sacrificed, and a scapegoat would carry their sins away, that all that was pointing to Christ. And that was so specifically shown on Good Friday as the temple curtain was torn in two, and no longer was blood needed to come before God, because death had come. The death of our God at that. God now allows us to come before him to draw near whenever we so desire because he is our God and he is open for business, open for our prayers. To Jesus here, go to the Bible, within the Bible, the book we know is the Psalms. There, there are so many messianic Psalms, Psalms that specifically are pointing to Jesus and what he would be like. You think of, uh, of Psalm 2, it's my son whom I love. You look at, at Psalm 8, the promises there. Psalm 23, the good shepherd. You go to Psalm 46, how he's a refuge and strength. You look at so many of them, and they proclaim Jesus to be the Christ. You go further, you look at some of the prophets. Somebody like an Isaiah. Isaiah, what didn't he tell us about Jesus? The promise of the virgin birth. Suffering servant in Isaiah at the end of 52 and starting in 53. You go to Jeremiah, a difficult book, but that, that book that has so much good news smack dab right in the middle of it as he's talking about this new relationship and covenant that he would form with us that has now been formed in Christ. Did he go to Micah, Micah 5, talking about how he would be born in Bethlehem, not to Jerusalem, not to Nazareth, but Bethlehem? You go there and talk about Zechariah and how Zechariah promised how the king would come to them riding on a donkey. Or did he go to Isaiah or Malachi again and talk about his forerunner, about the man we know as John the Baptist? Jesus could have gone to any of those and so many more within the scriptures as well, but we don't know. But what we can see from our vantage point now, sitting where we are in this New Testament, is that there is no possible way that this can be anybody but the one we know as Jesus of Nazareth. These things shouldn't have ever happened. They're, they're, they're going on over the course of how many thousands of years, and yet they happen exactly as God said. Truly, this shows the greatness of our God and just how strong and powerful he is that in every single one of his promises come true, that all the little intricacies come true exactly as he said. This is the Christ, and that is what the word proclaims about him that he is our promised Savior. And the effects of Jesus' teaching here on this day and really over the course of his entire life here on this earth, they are still felt to our day. As the word continues to go out and be preached. Because you look here and we see such a great example of what the church is. What happens but these people as they are on their way to the town known as Emmaus say they are being taught by the Lord. And as they are being taught by the Lord, they still can't see because God isn't preventing them, but their hearts were burning within them. And finally, they sit down for a meal together, having invited him into their own home. And then their eyes were opened as he began to break the bread. There they got to see their Lord, risen just as he had said. And what did they go out to do? Even though it was evening, even though darkness was setting upon them now, they would find their way back to Jerusalem, stumbling their way back in the dark, because they had to go and tell others about it. It was just too good of news. I had a story the other day, given by another pastor. It was in a, a Sunday school in one of our, our church bodies. And uh, there was a girl who was there that didn't really know Jesus' story at all. And she was told that Jesus died and that Jesus rose from the dead three days later. And she looked at this pastor and she said, is this true? And he said, yeah. And then she in turn replied to him, People aren't ever going to stop talking about that, are they? It's news that we, we take for granted sometimes because we've been hearing it for some of us for our entire lives, but it is news that is just absolutely pure good news that, that we should never give hope up on because it is so wonderful. This is what these men realized as they were making their way to Jerusalem, and this is what happens in our church. We learn and then we teach. This is what has been going on century after century. You take people like this, they taught. You take a person like John the Apostle, what happens to him? He is taught by Jesus for three and a half years, and then he goes, stands on Jesus' shoulders and teaches the next generation. Polycarp learns from John. Irenaeus learns from Polycarp, and so on and so forth. And how many other church fathers don't we know? 
They are the Athanasiuses of the world. The Athanasian Creed, we say that once a year on Trinity Sunday. There is the Augustans of the world. There, there are then the church reformers, men like Martin Luther and Martin Kemnitz. There are more from recent years as well. People like your parents, your Sunday school teachers, your grade school teachers, your faithful pastors you have had in your lifetime. This is the example of the church. This is what we do. We learn from our Christ. We learn from our prophet. We see how he is the one exactly like we needed, exactly the one who God said. And then we in turn go and tell others. So often we're nervous about how the church is going to consent. Well, with this is our model of what's going to stop it. With Jesus as the head still sending out his Holy Spirit on top of it, too. generation after generation will still hear the words and deeds of our God. Because God promises so. This is why Jesus relied on them. Why he did not simply reveal himself and let their eyes see right away. He went back to the word because the word works. And the word would be that which stayed around. Jesus would walk on this earth for you know, about 39 more days after this. But the word, that will stand the test of time and it will be with us always. Praise be to our God. Amen. Please black bread and rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We turn to page 41. As there we confess our Christian faith together according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the meeting of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. 
You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, errors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed. And comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, purity, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you today on behalf of a number of the blanks. Luca and Leo, as well as Gordon. Be with Luca and Leo as they are gaining strength and filling out. Continue to watch over them and be with those who are taking care of them, especially with their parents, that they might know the joys of what you have in store, the joys of heaven and the joys of salvation. God, we also come to you on behalf of Gordon Blank. Be with him during this difficult time as he continues to struggle with his own health issues. And Lord, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Here are some more as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. We pray the prayer of Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn. You may be a new one to a few of you. It's called Christ Arose. It's found on the insert.
Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit, keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and be seated as the choir will sing the benediction.
pleasure worshiping with you. We actually don't have any announcements. This is like the first time ever. I mean, Dennis didn't have to print off like five extra pages for him. So after Easter, Adele kind of quiets down. Give it a few weeks, so. Uh, Bible class, uh, today will be the last day before we break for summer just because of everything going on uh, throughout the, the course of the next month or so. Uh, once more we have uh, next week's quarterly meeting, then the following week there's confirmation for, for Aiden Flens, uh, then after that we have the festival praise, then there is the uh, 75th anniversary, and finally on the 28th there is Pentecost itself. As for some more classes over the summer, we have a, a couple that are, are going to be taking classes and already have started taking classes uh, for pre-marriage, and they are also going to do Bible instruction classes. So if you would like to be a part of that, uh, we're going to start on uh, next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday at 6.45. Uh, we won't obviously have them on the council uh, meeting evenings, but every other Tuesday we will have them on. This is for everybody. So if you have a friend that is interested in getting into the Bible or, or uh, you yourself, it's been a while since you've taken one of these courses, it's, it's a fun thing. It's, it's uh, open for everybody. It's one of those deals where there is no bad question. It's how we get to learn God's Word together. Uh, community help is needed for the end of May, and then with that 75th anniversary, uh, Susan is uh, looking to get together a, a, a board with all of our photos on it. It'd be nice, especially for a new pastor too, so I get to put names and faces. I'm starting to learn, but it's taken me a while. So, after uh, church, you can either send Susan uh, a copy of a photo of your, your family, or uh, she is going to be taking photos just right over there in the gathering hall as well. So that is it for the announcements. God's richest blessings unto you and the rest of this week.